Hello everyone, this is Ashish and welcome back to Talk Talks. Now I've changed the name because it was earlier called Talk Vlogs. Now some of you guys who have been following me for a long time, like over a year or two maybe, maybe some of you guys hung up over here for four years, you guys know that the original podcast that I started, which at that time I did not even know was a podcast, was Talk Vlogs. I basically started to discuss my past experiences and we did pretty well. I think we did somewhere close to 37 or so episodes and we are never going to stop. The only thing is that from now on, we are going to call it Talk Talks because first of all, let's be honest, those were not vlogs. I was just discussing things. I was talking and whenever you are talking, that is supposed to be called something related to talk, not a vlog. It's like... uh, logically incorrect and also talk talks was another podcast that i started that was supposed to be related to martial arts but it never became one i mean i was not regular over there that's all so we are now just going to combine those two podcasts i can talk about martial arts over here it's difficult to manage like five different podcasts it is already difficult to manage four so we are just going to simplify things for me and uh, what are we going to talk today about well you're going to love it because a lot of people have been requesting it for a long time and that is my first day at isro that is indian space research organization some might call it isro depends on the the media that you have consumed the south part mostly people call it isro but a lot of people call it isro as well so we have to go way back way back before the world was in mess kind of the peak of human civilization as we know it so far (laughs) after that it all went to mess especially after 2019 so back in 2018 to remember it properly somewhere close to 25th of uh, september yeah no not september yeah 25th of august I got the result that I am selected in Indian Space Research Organization. Actually secured All India rank of 4, which is a big deal if you do not know. So I got selected and one week later, exactly one week later, another Friday, uh, they sent me my posting, which was ISRO Propulsion Complex Mahindragiri. Now, if you do not know, a lot of there's a lot of stigma attached to two centers, that is Mahindragiri and Sri Arikota. But over time, when I visited both of these centers properly, like stayed over there for weeks, Mahindagiri was my actual center. And Sri Arikota, I've spent a huge amount of time over there. Maximum amount of time after IPRC, I've spent over there only. So these two, I think, is the most amazing centers to be at because you are going to see rocket engines. You are going to see stages of rockets the best manner possible in these two centers. But there was a stigma attached that these two are the worst centers of Indian Space Research Organization. Matter of fact, before that, also some of my friends, not really friends, but I had made a lot of contacts who were at that time currently ISRO scientists. And they said that, be careful. I was sitting in Mumbai at that time. So uh, Department of Atomic Energy. So these people said that, be careful, make your decisions properly, whether you want to leave your current job and walk so much down south. I said that, man, if ISRO calls, you don't ask questions. When ISRO calls, you run. You don't even walk. You directly go (laughs) wherever they call you. doesn't matter if it is Trivandrum or it does not matter if it is Kanyakumari. It does not matter if it is Sri Lanka. Wherever it is, man, they call, you go. So I went. I just booked a ticket for Trivandrum because that's the closest airport. One of the closest, there's another one, but okay, the closest that I knew of. So I decided to book a ticket for Trivandrum. And from Trivandrum, it is three hours away. Uh, the district is Tirnalveli, and the place is called Mahindagiri. Now, Mahindagiri is a place situated in between the mountains. Giri term itself stands for mountains, right? And actually, there's a Mahindagiri in Odisha as well. So the first time I thought, told my parents that, okay, I've been posted over here. They said that you've been posted to Orissa. That is amazing because you are going to be close to home now. But no, it's a place in Tamil Nadu. 
ఇట్స్ అట్ తమిళనాడు త్రివాండ్రం సారీ కేరళ తమిళనాడు బార్డర్ వెరీ క్లోజ్ టు త్రివాండ్రం సో ఇఫ్ యూ డి నాట్ నో ఇస్రో ఫస్ట్ ఆరిజినేటెడ్ ఇన్ త్రివాండ్రం సమ్ ఆఫ్ యూ గైస్ ఫ్రమ్ సౌత్ గాట్ సూపర్ మ్యాడ్ వెన్ ఐ డిడ్ నాట్ కాల్ ఇట్ తిరువనంతపురం అండ్ కాల్ ఇట్ త్రివాండ్రం వెల్ ఐ డి నాట్ నో వాట్ టు యాక్చువల్లీ కాల్ ఇట్ మే బీ ఇట్ ఇస్ తిరువనంతపురం అకార్డింగ్ టు యూ but it is to and I'm according to him because it is faster so deal with it now so so it is very close to kerala or the big closest biggest city would be in kerala uh, but it is in tamil nadu okay all right so i booked a ticket and i think that date was uh, 4th or 5th of october i flew from Triv- uh, mumbai to trivandrum okay landed in trivandrum uh late at night i was not aware that isro people are going to give me a proper stay like a guest house because at that time i was not an isro scientist right so <laughs> the weirdest part is if you are having a job currently and you resign from that job well you are in a position where you do not have any jobs because and this actually recently happened to one of the guys who who was in isro i'm going to discuss it later but let us say my case was that i was working in department of atomic energy as scientific officer c now i placed the resignation letter on 3rd september and on 3rd october i was relieved now from 3rd october to 8th of october i was unemployed because your selection is subject to medical test and i can share so many examples of that over time i am going to share some examples so your selection is subject to medical test if you fail the medical test you're not getting in no matter what you do now isro is pretty cool about it but a lot of government organization has a has this big thing going on with color blindness and most of the time you don't even know if you have color blindness or not you find out most of the time during these medical tests itself and the numbers are crazy like uh, in this country they say that one third of the population faces color blindness at some level or the other yeah that's scary if you are preparing for government examination that's scary that is why i'm telling young kids these days that you should get that check before you decide to prepare for competitive examinations but anyways i had passed medical test in department of atomic energy so it was not a problem for me i knew that i'm going to pass now uh, medical test for positions like engineering services would be a little bit tougher but when it comes to bark or isro it's pretty chill uh, my medical test at brc ran for close to one week but for this one for isro it ran for like two to three hours so let us explain for that because that was actually my first day at isro so that day that i reached over there i had to report to this medical center the next day So if you look at the history of Isro the earliest of centers that were created were number 1 VSSC and at that time it was not called VSSC VSSC stands for Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at that time it was not called VSSC at that time it was called uh, space station something i'm going to put it over here so that you guys get it but i cannot remember everything and close to that was RPP and RFF probably stands for rocket fabrication forgery something and rocket propellant plant now you cannot blame me because first of all it has been a while and second of all i was not posted at exact that center so that's where the medical center was located the vssc medical center so all you have to go over there uh, all you have to do is go over there uh, get a letter from maybe the medical chief and go to the hospital and then give it to them they are going to maybe take your blood i don't remember properly but yeah definitely take something not a hair sample but probably something and then they are going to run tests on that i was a little bit scared at that time because i just might have something in my blood that i did not want it to be detected not going to mention it over here maybe some story for some other day no <laughs> but they did not test for it mainly what they test for i think is some disease and obviously they test your eyesight also uh they test your blood pressure 
Like I said, it was a little bit more complicated in Department of Atomic Energy because they did something called ECG and then X-ray. In DA, they even took my shirt off at one point, told me to stand against the wall. My pants were still on and they did some X-ray thing on my back. Don't know what they tried to find out. I'm an engineer, not a doctor, son. So they just checked it a little bit here and there, some blood samples. I was super scared because of the reasons I have not disclosed. And I'm not gonna in this episode. <laughs> but someday, I am gonna. Now, uh, finally, after one hour of waiting over there, terrified, they came out and I said that, Ashish, you are clean. I said that, good. Good that you did not check everything. Now, <laughs> building the suspense way, way too much so it did not take a lot of time and i think uh, that day would have been 8th most likely 8th of october and 8th of october my medical testing done now that's when exactly that day itself i took a bus from trivandrum and then burst my way into tirnavali district mahendragiri exact and uh, the first thing I did is again, so they gave me a medical report sealed in an envelope. So the chief medical officer wrote that this guy is perfectly fine. Actually, I'm better than fine, but he must have probably written but perfectly fine medically. So, and then he stuck it, maybe sealed it, stamped it. I cannot open it, basically. Who can open it? Well, the person that I'm going to report to at IPRC. IPRC is for Propulsion Complex. We are going to use acronyms from now on. I think you are going to survive. Okay. So I reached this place, IPRC, and uh, I do not know people can keep on blaming, but this place is bloody beautiful, man. Because these are gigantic mountains. And if you do not know, I've lived in between mountains for a long time. I, I did four years in Sikkim, Manipal. So... I stayed in between mountains for a long time. Worst thing about mountains? Well, there are no trains. So mostly you are going to be reliant on the roadways. But Sikkim is again next level. Like you are the border of India. Matter of fact, there are like four borders in Sikkim state. Yeah, there are four borders. Bhutan, China and Nepal. Anyways, topic for a different day. But this one is like, okay, okay, mountainous. Actually, I grew up in a mountain kind of place as well. Rachi, which is in Jharkhand, is also something in the category, is coming in the category of a hill station. But Rachi would be the lowest. Mahindagiri is somewhere in between. Sikkim is the most mountainous I've ever seen. So this one is being in between, has railroads going on, but I reached over there by bus. But this place is amazing. Now, uh, if you think that why would you place a rocket fabrication center somewhere in the middle of um, mountains? Well, this is actually the best place that you can do it. Because number one, like I said, it is it being somewhere in between has fantastic highways. So transportation is not going to be an issue. And second of all, this place does not have any water. Well, that might be terrible for people like us because we can't be spending our time in lake on our Sundays. But uh, what IPRC is most focused towards is testing. And if you do not know, rocket tests a lot of times fails. Never happened in front of me, but obviously when they were trying to build it in the 1980s, then they had this fear. So anytime a uh, liquid propulsion rocket fails, by the way, IPRC is all about liquid propulsion rocket testing. The solid propulsion rocket testing happens in Sri Arikota or earlier, most of it used to happen in VSSC itself. Like I said, RPP, rocket propellant plant, that is solid rocket propellant. Okay, now IPRC being more focused towards liquid propellant. So if there's a, let us say explosion, the liquid propellant is going to fly away and the wind is going to carry it. And if there's a water body, it is going to enter that water body. And then you are going to drink that water. And then it is going to enter your bloodstream <laughs> you definitely don't want it so if you are going to create safety when it comes to rocket propellant uh, based rocket engines testing then you are going to find a place which is super dry okay all right that's anyways so so they found it and that's where Mahindagiri is now if you do not know my first 
place where I had to report in Department of Atomic Energy, which I have discussed over here as well. That is Kalpakkam. My BARC training school was in Kalpakkam campus. Now Kalpakkam is again in Tamil Nadu, but far away from this place in Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu is huge and has a big, big hand in my past. Okay, but I'm not from South India. A lot of people think that I'm from South India because a lot of time I speak in English. But I'm, as I said, from Ranchi, Jharkhand. Some people know it as Bihar also. But it's not. It's divided in 2000. Okay, coming back to the point. So, where was I? Yeah, so when I went to Kalpakkam for the first time, that was the first time I ever landed in South. At least in the Tamil Nadu part. Tamil Nadu is as South as it gets, son. It is as South as it gets. Because Kanyakumari belongs to Tamil Nadu as well. Okay, Kanyakumari, if you do not know, is the southmost part of India. Okay, so that is the first time that I landed in South, that is Chennai Airport. And I, I had no idea about South, but this is what I heard all the time. Like South people are so educated, they are so brainy, they are very knowledgeable, uh, their infrastructure is so amazing. Look at the cities like Bangalore and Chennai, they are so well developed, well planned. I said, wow, it, it must be an amazing place. You are going to have a tough time with the food over there and you are going to have a tough time with the language over there. Rest is fine. I said, I can deal with it. <laughs> so <laughs> I landed over there and uh, in my expectation, it is like super well developed center in Kalpakkam and uh, houses are all well developed and the infrastructure are well developed when i reached at kalpakkam i was disappointed now pay attention over here don't be too judgy and don't be too fast to get into a decision so it is all a thing about perspective now it was well developed everything was fine but your expectation man it screws with you so if you if you are going to some place and you're expecting it to be amazing then most likely you are going to be pissed off, okay? <laughs> For example, if if your friend told you that, hey, watch this movie, bro. It is amazing, man. I had a great time watching it. The suspense, man, you're going to be, you're going to be blown away. And when you watch that movie, aren't you disappointed? You're always disappointed. One example is a few days back, I just woke up and I found out that I have nothing to do today. And to you guys, it was a Tuesday. So if you wake up on a Tuesday morning, find out that you have nothing to do and you're not living with your parents, you probably made it, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> it was a Tuesday. Woke up early in the morning, like eight o'clock. And then I decided <laughs> that's not too early, but still sometimes for me. So I decided uh, nothing to do. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to lie around, open up my laptop, maybe go to Netflix, maybe check out anything all right first of all get coffee and then second of all do whatever you want so i opened up netflix and the first movie that popped up in front of me was joker now i've watched this movie before not completely but for the first five to ten minutes and uh, it was boring all right more more sad than boring and one thing I definitely do not want on a Tuesday morning where I have nothing to do is to be sad early in the morning. So I said that, God damn it. Do I really need to watch it? And then I said that it's a shit movie anyways. Why not just jump from one place to another? It's free for me if I have Netflix subscription anyways. Just jump five to ten steps. Maybe I'm going to watch this movie in 15 minutes. The first jump I took is that scene probably... Uh, where Joker went, goes completely crazy for the first time, like shoots three guys in the metro. <laughs> okay, subway. I said, man, I gotta stick around and check this movie out. And then I started watching. And by the end of that movie, I was just saying, this is the best movie that I've ever watched. But notice the point. I liked that movie because I had not expected anything out of that movie right so even the best movie can be a shit movie if you expected a lot a shit movie can be an okay okay movie if you did not expect anything in a similar manner any place you go can be an amazing place depending on how low your expectations are my expectations were humongous for kalpakkam and it got kicked in the ass so now my expectation from mahindagiri was shit 
and then I was amazed that this place is actually good. So finally, I reached Mahindragiri, IPRC, the gates, Isro Propulsion Complex, Government of India, and it's a huge gate, a gate that ended up being my everyday going in and getting out kind of for the next more than a year. But that was the first day that I reached that gate. And obviously there will be CSF cards. CSF stands for Center of Industrial Something Something. Okay, it's not the Indian Army, but they are basically <laughs> responsible for the safety of industries. Uh, and uh, it is going to be in every industry throughout the country. And there's one college that has CISF, and that is IIST, Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. Okay, now, coming back to the point. So, CISF guards are all North Indians. Because CISF has this thing that for the first three years, they're going to be in rotation, right? So, North people will be in South, South people will be in North. Like, even I found a lot of Tamil CISF guards who are like senior 10 years down the line. They speak fantastic Hindi because for the first three to five years, they have stayed in North. So, these people speak perfect Hindi, one of the very few in that place. See, Tamil Nadu itself is known to speak kind of the least Hindi in this entire country. I do not know the statistics, but if I had to guess, this is the state which speaks least Hindi. So it, it was difficult anyways for me to navigate through. The worst part is that even in the buses, you are going to see uh, the destinations and the numbers written in Tamil, which is now it is super difficult for me because I do not know whether the bus is going where I want to go or it is going in the opposite direction. So you have to do a little bit of navigating, then you are going to talk to people next to you and they are going to be having a tough time understanding Hindi. Sometimes they have easier time understanding English than Hindi. I, I reiterate, most of the time, they have easier time understanding English. Okay, now, so getting the CISF people who speak perfect Hindi was definitely a change for that day. And uh, even though the mellow Hindi speakers were good change. They spoke something which was pretty brittle. Sorry, bitter. <laughs> they said that I cannot stay over there yet. They said that the guest house, which is inside the main gate or inside the main IPRC, is not open for people who are not central government employees. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, that I'm not an ISRO scientist yet. I had the medical reports and yeah, the selection was subject to medical report. But it's not official because I have not signed papers yet and that is not going to happen in the evening. It was around six o'clock or so. It is going to happen tomorrow. So we are not going to let you stay over here and you can find a place outside. And obviously I said what you are saying right now in your head, that's bullshit because <laughs> Certainly, I deserve to get a place to stay. I work my ass off to crack this examination, man. You cannot do that. But they did it. All right. So, so they said that not going to entertain you. Guest house is full and you can leave. So when I stuck to it, like, no, 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 you are going to give me a place over here to stay. They said that guest house is full. So they even pretended to call the guest house and within fraction of second day oh it, is it full okay now nice hey guest house is full you can go so they did not know that i'm famous son <laughs> they did not know and by the way this is one thing that i enjoyed a lot in isro i was famous before i got there everybody knew who i was mainly because of my youtube channel and uh, most of the time people knew who i was before they saw my face and a lot of times during the conversation, hey, what did you do? Yeah, I, I used to work in Department of Atomic Energy. Oh, you're that guy. So they knew a lot of times. But in this particular case, I had a student, I can't really say student, but yeah, one of the followers of my YouTube channel uh, who went through my YouTube channel for a long time. Number one, preparing for, preparing for BARC interview in 2018 only. And then for cracking ISRO written test and for preparing for ISRO interview, okay? So if you do not know, while I was in Department of Atomic Energy, preparing to get into Indian Space Research Organization, I was also guiding a lot of people to crack PARC, crack GATE, and crack ISRO. That's pretty cool. You have to admit it, admit it, 
right now okay now that you have admitted it so <laughs> one of these guys a lot of them like bunch of them dozens of them got into bhabha atomic research center couple of them also got into isro one such person i had actually talked to him before he was going to appear for isro interview and he was mainly worried about hey man my my english is not that good how to proceed with my isro interview i said hey, don't worry about it even though i had never appeared in isro interview but i've i'd done so much research and i had talked to so many people who were working in isro who had cracked those interviews i had pretty good idea and plus my experience with bars interview and it bombay interview said that do this 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 you can work on this 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 and i used to continuously guide him his interview actually took place before me and after his interview he shared he shared the experience that ashish this is how my interview went having good hopes i said yeah you did well and at that time i had not given my interview but on 17th of august i gave my interview and got selected he knew that i was also going to join i found out that he was going to join the same center and high five virtually on the whatsapp chats i said that we are going to meet so this is what happened i called him i said that hey this is what is happening in the gate so he already was staying at the guest house so i joined couple of days late because of my late resignation from department of atomic energy so he was already over there and i called him and i said that i'm outside these people are saying that there's no place in the guest house you're in the guest house talk to that guy personally and let me know if there's a place for me to stay because i can tell by their faces that they are lying so he said that of course these fuckers are lying because there's a place in my room <laughs> so they distributed the the rooms in guest house in pairs right so in every room two people are going to stay and he, there was no roommate in his room so obviously there's a place so he said that i'm going to talk to the guest house person right now i'm coming to the gate so so the gate is you can say a kilometer or two away from the guest house so you can walk but you'll have to have a long walk which is fine as well okay you are going to take somewhere around 5 to 10 minutes to reach the gate from the guest house all right so he he said he talked to the guest uh, guest house guy and now the guest house guy must be surprised that oh my god i just lied and i'm going to now get caught and he said that okay i'm going to tell him to stay with me you don't have any problem right so no problem probably that is what he said and he came to the gate where the csf guys were holding me and uh, now the csf guys cannot say anything either so so uh i just checked in and uh, the first thing that they did is scan all my luggage so if you do not know all of these centers like brc or isro or drdo i would be guessing they have like i think level 5 security basically the same security system that you have in airports same level scanning 100% checks 100% same csf guards also by the way and they are going to have same kind of checks for the personal body checks and all also you cannot carry a lot of uh, electronic instruments but in this case obviously because i was going to stay over there and this is the first time that i'm coming now i would be having laptops i would be having phone and if you do not know me your boy rocks with two laptops and two phones all the time this is what i do <laughs> so at that time also i had two different laptops two different phones i had to put like registration number of every laptop and every phone in their registers and uh, everything was done pretty quickly like in 2 hours or so <laughs> really it took a long time and uh, then finally this guy gentleman waited for me for all, that much amount of time and showed me the way afterwards i stayed in his room that night which also was technically my room because i checked in in the guest house as well and next day it was time to actually start my first day at isro but this was actually my first day at isro that was that would be my second day at isro this was my first impression of isro but let's not talk about these things hopefully you did not think that i'm bitching about isro i loved it every part they did their job i finally got a room so i was happy but when i actually got in to the main gate that's that's when i started seeing the insights of isro for the first time because mark my words even though i was near rpp rff or vssc i never got into any of those gates i was just there in the medical center but this iprc first time i got in and uh, 
it was kind of the same like it was looking from the outside <laughs> a lot more mountains inside but then i started getting inside and i saw something which looked like a jet like a fighter jet so that's interesting does this drone makes fighter jets and uh, i never found out what that actually was you have any guesses what that was so it looked like a fighter jet had a fin on the back like on the back side beca because of which it looked like a fighter jet it looked like it has a big uh, engine on the back side but what would it do with a fighter jet like obviously it was like a monument placed in front of the academic building you know what it was it was an l40 stage if you do not know an l40 stage has a vikas engine and 40 stands for the tons of propellant that it is loaded with it is used in gslv mark 2 four different stages are strapped around it plays as a booster stage that's the one of the first stages that works the second one would be the s139 stage all five engines fires simultaneously uh, in the beginning not simultaneously actually on the technical ground uh, l40 stages fires couple of seconds before the solid booster just to test it, these technicalities i've dis uh, discussed before but back there for the first time when i walked into isro that's what i thought that it must be some jet some fighter jet with its wings chopped off maybe but that's the first thing that i saw and the next day the next day was the day where i actually reported to the vikas engine first i went and talked to the director no 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 it was dd deputy director and then i was assigned to my manager i got a friend who's from my home state and he showed me the ways but that's a story for another day i think this is more than sufficient for this one how was it did you like it hopefully you did i liked it i had a good time does not even feel like i would i've been talking for like 30 minutes but that's actually the first day at isro some of you guys when you saw the title would have thought that oh did you see rockets i saw a rocket engine in my first day did not know that it was a rocket engine <laughs> there was funnier things like that there's a valve that is used to throttle uh, propel propellants the uh, oxidizer and the fuel and at that time i thought that these are just containers that contains n204 and udmh later on i found out that these are valves but that's something that maybe i'm going to discuss in the next one my second day at isro where i really started to look at rockets okay but it was really really a dream come true and you can understand why i left mumbai to drop into this one of the southernmost part of the country uh mahindragiri if you do not know is just 20 kilometers away from the southernmost tip of india now, i'm not saying that southern part is worse than the northern part for north indian it would be a difficult time down south you can understand and uh, i did not leave that place because of its posting never there are a lot of reasons which cocktailed my resignation from isro definitely it was a dream come true see these are not edited videos there are no cuts over here whatever i speak i speak from my heart and over time the isro diaries are going to continue and bark diaries are going to return don't you worry there are a lot of lot of stories to be discussed over here and i'm sure that you're going to love it some of you guys must be terrified that did ashish just stopped his talk vlogs no i did not i'm never going to stop it this is one of my best projects ever now i can see it right now that i have released 34 34 episodes so far of uh, talk vlogs now it is going to be called talk talks this is talk talks episode 35 and we are going to continue on doing it some there will be at thousands and you're going to be enjoying it just as much just with more people around okay guys we are going to see each other again very soon meanwhile if you are interested in improving your communication skills your spoken english we are running a course by the name of art of speaking the may batch registration is all open right now nope no seats in april batch but may batch registrations are open you check your priorities think about this course you want to improve your communication skills well you're welcome and uh, link will be down in the description box along with a limited amount of uh, like 
limited validity coupon code so you'll get some discount if you register right now and that's about it guys i'll see all of you in the next one till then bye